Hello everyone, my name is Austin Shaner, and welcome back to my channel. Last month I posted a video on the different types of strategies you can use in Fusion 360 to tackle the headstock transition for guitars. Well, in that video I said I had not been able to achieve the perfect headstock transition because of the 3D geometry that you'd have to draw and constrain, which is really difficult. Well, while I've been AWOL the past few weeks tending to my newborn daughter, I've been watching a bunch of tutorials on the Surface workspace in Fusion 360. While doing that, I came across two videos which I highly, highly recommend you all go watch. The first is Fusion 360 Academy Refresher Surface Modeling Under the Hood. This was hosted by Jake Fowler, one of the lead designers of Autodesk, and he goes into some really great detail on how the Surface tools were designed and function. And the second is kind of an odd one but it's called Fusion 360 Case Study 17 by Fusion 360 School. The gentleman that runs that channel was creating a pitcher spout, which seems a bit odd since we're talking about guitars, but it really perked my ears because it strangely looked like what we want to do with the headstock transition. And in that video, he used a special type of projection called intersection curve, which, frankly, I've used in SolidWorks and Siemens NX in the past, but I actually wasn't aware that it was available in Fusion. So that's kind of a game changer, and that really changed the approach that I take to designing the headstock. And in the past few weeks, I've spent a lot of time refining it whenever I get free time. And so I want to show you how I achieved, finally, the perfect headstock transition. Okay, so jumping into Fusion, let's take a second to define what I mean by the perfect headstock transition. So when I was designing this, I set myself a couple of rules. So first of all, I couldn't have any 3D sketches. So no uh, 3D sketches, T-splines, fillets, or anything we really can't fully constrain because that would possibly leave us with undesirable geometry. I also didn't want to have to sketch something that I'm not confident in. And what I mean by that is like the arc coming from here to here or something like that because I don't actually know what that's supposed to be and so I didn't want to have to do any guesswork I wanted to be able to fully sketch this with just the different angles so looking at it from the side looking at it from the top looking at it from the neck etc second I couldn't have any excess sketches or planes so it had to be an efficient design because in the previous examples that I've shown you guys in other videos I ended up with like nine sketches and like 12 planes, you know, basically big brain trying to figuring out the best way to model this. Um, so I had to scrap that. It had to be simple and efficient. Three, I must be able to actually update the dimensions of the headstock without actually breaking the design or any sketch references within limits, of course, because obviously you can delete a line and then that might break your sketch. But so long as I don't delete anything, I should be able to just change the dimensions and have the whole design update. And finally, no creases, dips, flat spots, or any imperfection on the surfaces. I want this to be glassy smooth with no creases or anything like that. And I think I've nailed it. So let me show you how to do this. Okay, so I'm going to delete everything up to the first three sketches. And we're going to do this together. So these are the three sketches that you're going to need in order to lay out the entire design. You won't have to do any other sketches. Well, you'll have to create a new sketch, but you won't have to draw any other dimensions or any lines or anything like that. This is what's going to drive the entire design. So on the first sketch, you're going to have your outer profile of your headstock. And quick tip, if you're using a volute, um, I would recommend that you do it in three arcs rather than a spline. It can be done with a spline just fine, but I have had the best results when I do it like this. So I have an arc here that's tangent to the wing, and then an arc that's a midpoint to where the nut would land, and that's tangent to each other. And then I've got another arc that's basically symmetrical to the top one. You don't have to have this vertical, so you can have this one like three quarters of an inch, and this one two inches. <clears throat> I apologize for my voice. I'm a little under the weather today. But 
essentially, this is basically what you need to have. And so that way, what you want to be able to do is just come in here and change the radius of the volute. So I want, like, let's say I want to go 0.25, something really pointy, or I can go 0.8. You could even go wider than that and go like 0.9. The main thing is you don't want this to breach past this arc right here. As long as it doesn't go past the arc, everything will be fine. So let's go back to 625, which is what I've been using. Okay, then you need your side profile. So what does the headstock look like from the side? So this gives you an opportunity, let's pull this up, to dimension the height of your neck. At the, at the start of the transition. So in this case, it's 0.6 because that's basically the end of my neck. And then the height to the top of the volute, you don't have to dimension, if you keep this tangent right here, you don't have to dimension any radiuses. You're basically just saying, okay, how thick is my headstock? How deep do I want this, cat, um, this cutaway to be? What's the height of my neck? And what's the height of the volute? And then anything else that you need to to uh, constrain this sketch, you just project it in from the first sketch. And the last sketch you need is basically just a, a sketch of your neck profile. So pull that up. There's a one quick tip in here is if you're going to do it the way I'm going to show you, make it two separate arcs that are tangent to each other rather than one arc that stretches across the whole thing. You can do it with one arc, but I got the best results when I did it this way. Now you'll notice I've got a little arc here, and I will explain why we need that in a moment. But first of all, we need to get the rest of the headstock sketched up, and I'll show you how to do that using the intersection curve. So now we're going to do the intersection curve. So let's go ahead and create a new sketch on any plane. It doesn't matter what plane it's on because this is going to end up being a 3D sketch, although we don't have to draw anything in 3D. So I'm just going to select this plane, and then we can come up here to create, project include, intersection curve. Now what this does is, so if I select this line and this line, let's say, actually here's an easier way of showing it. So if I go surface, extrude, and I extrude, let's disable chaining, if I extrude this out, and then let's say I extrude this up. Oh, enable chaining again. And I extrude that up. You'll notice that at the cross section of these two, there's a theoretical line right here, right, where they meet. That's what intersection curve gives you. It gives you the point where those two sketches intersect each other. And so if we go back, we can go create, project include, intersection curve. And so let's just go ahead and do this one and the two outside ones. Actually, we can do all three of those. Hit OK. And let's do it again. Project include with the top one and those same three. You can kind of see what's already happening. The headstock is already starting to take shape. So then we can go project include again. And then we can use this arc with this line and this line to close those up. Hit OK. And now we just need to take care of the front side. So let's go back to project include. We're going to be doing this a lot. Use this arc. And you can double click this or you can select each line individually. And if we select those, then you can see that we actually get the 3D sketch that we need for the whole volute. So it lines up from this angle perfectly. And if we look at it from the top, it lines up with the volute perfectly. And so that gives us our 3D sketch. Go back, do it again for the bottom side. We want this arc to these outside wings like that. Hit OK. And then we've got now we've got the bottom cutaway as well. So it's, it follows my sketch here, and it follows my sketch from the top. And then all we need now in order to do this is we need the lines here in order to close off this sketch. So let's do one more, and let's go Project Include. 
and we'll select this center line right here and this line right here. That will give me a square because if we extended this up, all, all of these would end up intersecting with this line. Hit OK. And now let me hide the first three sketches. You can see what it's given us. It's given us all the geometry that we need in order to actually create this headstock. That's amazing. I did not know that this feature was available in Fusion 360. I have used it many times when designing things from cross sections in other CAD softwares. Now that I know this is here, it's opened up a whole new world of possibilities for me. So let's go ahead and let's start modeling. So we're going to do this entire thing with a couple extrudes and the patch tool. And I know what you might be thinking, the patch tool is kind of an ugly, you know, spackle for Fusion 360. But actually, if you give it the proper constraints, right, or the proper design intent, it's actually incredibly powerful. And as I've gotten better with the tool, I've really started to appreciate it. So let's see what happens if we just patch this surface without any proper constraints. So let's just say we want to go here. To here, select our boundary like this, and hit OK. Not terrible, actually, right? The problem is, is that you're going to get some dips. So actually, this came out a little bit better, but you can see right here. So it's not actually coming tangent. You can see that it's going to dip down like that. And that's going to end up if we ended up extruding this out. So let's go ahead and extrude that out. This might make it more obvious and hide our sketches. So you can see here that it's not actually coming tangent to it. So we can't just simply patch it. What we need to do is we need to give it um, some better constraints. So let me pull that back up real quick. Never mind, I can't. I already got rid of it. So what we want to do is we want to extrude the surfaces that we care about the patch following. So let's just extrude this one out by one inch. And then we know that we want it to line up with this one. So let's extrude that. Let's delete that. Extrude that out by one inch. And then this one, we want to extrude in the other direction. This is going to seem weird, but it'll all make sense in a moment. So let's extrude that to object, this point right here. So essentially what we're doing is we're saying we need the patch tool to come perfectly tangent to this surface, this surface, and this surface. And so what's cool is when you pull up the patch tool and you hide your sketches, if you're not selecting a sketch line, but you actually select a surface line, so like this one right here, it gives me the ability to say whether it's tangent, um, connected, or curvature. So connected is what we just did with the patch tool where it's literally just connecting the points. It, it pays no mind to what's happening after the curve. If I do tangent, then obviously it'll just go tangent um, to this line right here, which is great, but it's not perfect. So curvature is not just tangent, but it also maintains the same rate of curvature. So that's going to give us the best transition possible. So what we want to do, let's close this out, is we want to patch, hide our sketches for a moment, select these three surfaces, and change them all to curvature. Like that. Now we can bring back our sketches and select the rest of it and just close up the boundary. We're only doing half of it right now. Now if I hit OK, let's take a look at this real quick. Let's reverse normal for a second. So you'll see that we no longer have that little hump because we've forced it to come perfectly G2 curvature to this surface. We've also forced it to go G2 to this surface and we forced it to go G2 to this surface up until this point. 
and at this point it can break away and no longer follow this curvature. So all we have to do now is actually just delete these surfaces. Delete. And then all we need to do is mirror this over. So we can go create, mirror, and then let's bring our origin plane in. Select this plane right here. Hit OK. And look at that. We already have the making of a perfect headstock transition. So you can see, I, I could have just patched the whole thing together, but by giving me those surfaces, I've guaranteed that every part we care about, so the design intent, right? We care that it's matching this curvature. We care that it's matching this curvature. And we care that it's matching this one right here. So we've forced it to follow those constraints, and then everything else is perfect. So now let's do a quick test before we go too far into this. Let's go back and change our design. So let's change this to 0.25. Something really pointy. In fact, let's even go smaller. Let's go 16th of an inch. Let's see what happens. Look at this. Actually, we got a little artifact because it's not stitched together yet. So that'll go away in a moment. But you can see that even from this angle, it's still following that curve. From this angle, it's still following this curve. And from this angle, it's still following that curve regardless of the volute we gave it. So let's go back. Let's change it to something wider. So let's do, oh, there we go. Let's do like 0.8, something much bigger. Update it, and look at that. It's already gone back and updated, and everything is still glassy smooth. So that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to undo, take it back to my 16th, of, or not 16th, 5 eighths of an inch. Hit OK. And now basically that part's done. All we really need to do is patch up the rest of this body. So what we can do is we can go, we can create a patch on this surface right here and this surface right here. And let's do this surface. Actually, we don't want to do that. I'll show you why in a second. Let's call that, oh, yeah, let's call that good for now. Now what we can do is come to extrude, and we can extrude this face up to this object right here. Hit OK. Let's hide our sketches for a second and delete that face. We don't need it. And Instead of patching this, because if I patch this and, and up to here, I'm going to get a little dimple right here. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to extrude, turn off chaining, we're going to extrude this line, these four lines right here, and we're going to go two-sided, two-object, this one, and two-object here. So what this allows us to do is it allows us to close off those surfaces without having any patched dimples. Now all we need to do is split those surfaces and stitch everything together. So let's go ahead and hit this surface and this surface. And you can come up to modify and say split face. And we want to split it with our original sketch. So we want to, let's take off. I don't know we do want that right here. It's going to look like it's cutting through other stuff too, but it's only cutting through the ones we selected. So we hit OK. And now we can select this one, this one, and this one, and just delete them. And so now we've closed off that. Now we need to split these two. I saved these separately because they have different curvature that we need to split them with. So let's select this face. Let's go modify split face and what we want to select for the splitting tool is our volute sketch right like that hit ok and let's go ahead and split the other one before we delete it so let's go modify split face and then we select the right here now it might not let you select this one unless you select something that connects them so i can select this one and that one 
and now it'll let me split those. So I can now select all of these surfaces and hit delete. And so we've basically already got our headstock. So let's hide our sketches. And let's see what happens if we stitch it. Sometimes we have to reverse normal. Stitch. Okay. So now it's all one solid body. So if I go inspect section analysis, you can see that there's nothing hollow in the section anymore. So we are good. If I go back and undo and I do the, um, the section analysis, you can see that it's not actually solid, it's hollow inside. So we don't want that. We want to go back to where it was stitched. Section analysis. Yep. Okay, we are good. So that is the headstock transition. So let's apply appearance real quick. I'm going to apply mahogany. And let's try fiddling with the design and see, see what happens. So let's go back to our main, um, our main sketch. And let's change this from one, one and a half inches to 0.75. And let's change this to like 0.25. Finish. You can see that it's updated everything perfectly and the entire surface is still glassy smooth all the way around. And so if I go back, let's change this to like, uh, not this one, this one to like two inches. Oop, broke that two inches. Okay, it doesn't like it because of this, I think. Let's do 0 0.75, 0 0.625. Oh, that's getting a little weird on me. I must have lost a constraint. Okay, let's undo. Two. Yeah, I must have lost a constraint somewhere when I did that. Let's make it like really dramatic, like three inches. And let's hide our sketch. You'll notice timeline still isn't broken. Everything is updated. And the whole thing is still perfectly smooth. So I'm going to take this back. To where I had it before. And let's apply a zebra analysis and see what we've got. So let's go inspect zebra analysis. Now, what this does, if you're not familiar with it, it basically simulates how light would reflect off of a surface. So if I hit OK here, what we're looking for is any major spikes, right? So let me actually go back to. I might be able to do this. Let's go back to this right here and change these from curvature to tangent and see what that zebra analysis looks like. Let me see. I need to reapply it, I think. Let's go back, make sure those are still, yep, tangent. No, we don't want tangent, we want connected. That was the problem. Okay, let's go back to inspect zebra analysis. Now what you'll see is that there's like these weird spikes right here, right? And everything right in the center is kind of jumbled. And so basically what that's telling me is that this is not a perfectly smooth surface. There's some there's enough imperfections where two lines don't come fully tangent to each other. So let's go back, change these all to curvature. Hit OK. Let's go back to our zebra analysis. Got a slight imperfection in the middle, but it's imperceptible whatsoever. And everything else has a nice curve, which means the light's going to reflect off it nicely. So one more test. Let's go ahead and turn off the zebra. Let's change this. Um, let's change this to chrome. Actually, let's go. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, let's go to render. Let's take a look at this. So we're looking at the reflections here. So the reflections are showing us, actually it might be better in the design space. So if there was a problem in the surface, you would notice it right away in these reflections, right? Because all of a sudden the light would jump around. 
but I am super, super satisfied with this. Actually, another way we can make this Chrome uh, show us a little bit more is if we do go back to the render space, we open up our scene settings, and in environment library, we change it to um, some kind of uh, picture. So if I drag that onto it, let's, uh, let's change our front view. So let's change this to top. There we go. So now you can see, right, you can see the reflections of this picture that's on it. But if we look at this from all angles, we don't see any major changes in the curvature going through it. So this took me a long time to figure out. Um, I've been working on the headstock transition in Fusion for, God, probably a year. Um, I have been successful doing it in SolidWorks. I have been successful in NX, but it's always bugged me that I've never been successful in Fusion. And I'd like to just give a shout out to, I believe it was Jake Fowler from Autodesk and the gentleman who runs the Fusion 360 school for introducing me to some of those concepts and basically training me up on surface tools and the intersection curve because that drastically changed my approach and allowed me to actually nail this transition. So I hope this works for you guys. Um, leave me a, go ahead and give it a try and leave me a comment down below if that worked for you. I know it's a little bit of an odd workflow, but it's quite an incredibly efficient design. Um, and I'm able to, although I don't know why I lost that constraint earlier, I am able to update this to some pretty extreme designs and it still maintains uh, the integrity of the transition. Actually, just a two inch, actually let's go like four inch, something pretty extreme. And still nothing in my timeline is broken and everything is still following the constraints that I gave it. So I'm, I'm willing to call that the perfect headstock transition. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope this works for you guys. I think I've finally solved it. And now we can get on to making a guitar.